Hello everyone, welcome back to Mathematics for Liberal Arts Chapter 10. In the previous two videos we've been discussing the material of Section 10.4 and we're going to close out that section now with a problem, precisely one. Now in the notes when we go and look at it you're going to see that this problem is marked as optional and that's because I don't anticipate giving you any problems like this on an exam. However, it is a valuable real-life sort of problem and it is also a problem in the book which I feel is not explained very carefully and I would like to take some time to go over that problem with you now. Now this has to do with what's called automatic escalation and if you read about it in the textbook it explains it more or less like this. Uh, if you are employed at a company for a very long time, let's say 44 years such as in this problem, you're going to over time get raises and pay bumps of all sorts and that's going to cause you to have more and more. A lot of times employers will offer you an automatic escalation retirement plan where you tell them what percentage of your income you want to go towards a retirement plan. And so as you continue to get more and more money over time the amount that you save is going to increase this problem is supposed to mimic that sort of situation. You can see it here. You're going to work for 44 years at a company. You're getting an APR of 6%. It's going to be monthly contributions, so that means it's compounded monthly and you make a contribution every single month. And the amounts that you contribute change over time due to automatic escalation. So in the first 10 years, from uh, year 1 to year 10, you contribute 150 per month. The next 10 years, from a, a year 11 to year 20, you contribute 225 per month. The next 10 years, from year 21 to year 30, you contribute 350 per month. And in the final 14 years, from year 31 to year 44, you contribute 500 per month. The question here is, how much did you end up saving at the end of your working career? As I said, this is a problem from the book. You can find it on page 312. What we're going to do is going to mimic the book's explanation of how to do this problem. However, I would like to take just a little bit more time to explain how things are being broken down and actually do some of the calculations with you guys. It is not a hard problem, even though it sounds very difficult. What it really is is a problem that requires you to think it through carefully. So that is what we are going to do now. Now, I think when doing this problem, the easiest thing you can possibly do for yourself is do everything graphically first and use that to understand what's happening. So I'm just going to draw a horizontal line and I'm going to mark on it the time. So this is year one and then over here is going to be year 10. Uh, and then over here is year 11 all the way up to year 20. From year 21 to year 30. And then from year 31 to year 44, like that. I'm going to divvy it up like this, and the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write the amounts out above, but I'm going to break down those amounts in a certain way that's going to make this problem easier to understand. So let's do that with the first batch of years from year 1 to year 10. Well, what do we know about years 1 through 10? The first thing we know is that this constitutes 10 years. So I'm just going to put that underneath to help us remember. Uh, going back to the problem itself, it says for years 1 through 10 we contribute $150 a month. Okay. So I'm just going to write 150 up at the top. And that's about it. We're just making yearly contributions, or excuse me, monthly contributions with an APR of 6% in the amount of $150. All right, that's pretty straightforward. There's nothing much more to say about that. 
So why don't we move on to where things start to get interesting in years 11 through 20. Let me also say really quickly that this graph is a little bit deceiving. It's not meant to be. It's meant to make things clearer. But if you look at the gap between the 10 and the 11 here, it almost looks like there's some kind of small difference, like maybe the difference of a year. And that's not really true. When I say year 1 through 10, I mean year 1, beginning of year 1, through the end of year 10. When I say 11, I mean the beginning of year 11. So actually, there's really no gap here. I draw a gap to try and make things a little bit less crowded. So please, don't trick yourself. Okay, what do we know? Well, we know, once again, this represents a 10-year gap. So there's another 10 years. Um, how much are we contributing each month? Okay, from years 11 through 20, we contribute 225, okay? So 225. Hmm. Well, before we were contributing $150. You know what? I noticed something. $225 looks like I was contributing $150 and then I ended up contributing an extra 75. Now you may be wondering to yourself, well, why do we care about that? Well, think about it like this. If I look at it this way, it almost looks like from years 1 through 10, and then again from years 11 through 20, I've been contributing 150 every single month. So in other words, for the last 20 years, from the beginning of year 1 to the end of year 20, I've been making monthly contributions of $150. And then I've also been making contributions to a retirement savings account in the amount of $75 from years 11 through 20, so for 10 years. What this means is I can treat this almost as if I have two different contributions, two different monthly contribution situations going on in parallel. One that's been going on for 20 years so far in the amount of 150 per month and another which has been only going on for 10 years so far in the amount of 75 per month. It won't change the problem to think about it that way. In fact, it will make it much easier. Okay, let's see if this pattern continues. Maybe we can keep doing this from years 21 through 30. All right. Once again, we have a gap of 10 years. That hasn't changed. And according to our information, uh, years 21 through 30 represent 350 per month. Okay, so we'll write 350 up here. And we're going to try and do the same thing we did last time. We're going to break it down so we show the original amount that we've been contributing, 150. And we're going to try and conti uh, continue that trend of contributing 150 monthly. Since we also started contributing 75 monthly, starting from year 11 and ending in year 20 so far, we want to see if that trend continues. And then we're going to see if there's anything left over, any new amounts being contributed monthly. So let's see. Yes, definitely we can pull 150 out of 350. And we can also pull 75 out. If you look, 150 plus 75 is 225. So if I've accounted for $225 in contributions out of the 350, that means we're left with 125. Yes, if I add 125, 70, and 75, and 150, it looks like I'm getting 350. Okay, so now our information is telling us what's happened is for 30 years, I've contributed 150 monthly. For 20 years, I've contributed 75 monthly in addition to that. And for 10 years at this point, I've contributed 125 monthly. All right, we only have one last batch of years to look at, so let's go ahead and check those out. All right, now I pointed this out before, but if you count this carefully, 
if you consider all of year 31 through the end of year 44, this is going to represent, oops, too thick, much better. This is going to represent 14 years. And at the very end, we're contributing 500 per month. Okay, so we'll write 500 up here. Okay, so let's account for the 150, the 75, and the 125. We know that if we put all of those things together, we get 350. So what's the difference between 350 and 500? Uh, should be $150. Okay, so let's take a look to see what's going on. It looks as if for 44 years, we have contributed to a retirement savings account monthly in the amount of $150. We have also, for 34 years, contributed $75 monthly to a retirement savings account. We have also, for 24 years, contributed $125 to a retirement savings account monthly. And for 14 years, we have contributed, again, additionally, $150 per month to a retirement savings account. What this means is we can treat this problem by doing each of those amounts, the 150 monthly for 44 years, 75 monthly for 34 years, 125 monthly for 24 years, 150 monthly for 14 years, we can do each of those retirement amounts as its own separate formula using our monthly contributions formula. And then we can add all the results together and that will give us our final answer. So let's go ahead and set each of those ones up. Let's handle each and every single one of those savings amounts individually and carefully. We'll follow the formula. So, in the very first batch, which lasts 44 years, we're contributing $150. From our formula, we should have 1 plus 0, 0.0, let's go ahead and double check our numbers here, 6%. So 0 0.06 over 12 to the power of 44 times 12. It's a little backwards from what I usually write, but that's okay. It means the same thing. And divided by 0 0.06 over 12. Now, since we spent the previous video learning how to calculate this, I'm not going to show the calculation all the way through. Instead, I'm going to show the result, and I challenge you to try to do the same alongside me. So here it goes. Based upon this calculation, which I've set up here, it should be that we get $387,000 639.78, okay, approximately, I've rounded this at the last point to two decimal places. Okay, so let's try the next one. Now the next one, according to our information, was $75 monthly for 34 years. So our formula should be 75 times 1 plus 0 0.06 over 12 to the power of, let's do it the correct way around, 12 times uh, 34. It doesn't change calculations, but it helps us remember what to do when, which is valuable. And then over 0 0.06 divided by 12. All right, once again, I'm gonna show the final calculation, which tells us 
774 point two five approximately okay now let's see after that we were contributing a hundred and twenty five dollars monthly for twenty four years so we have one plus a lot of the setup is not going to vary from one calculation to the next the biggest changes are of course to the monthly contribution amounts and to the number of years but everything else should be very very much the same and I apologize for how cramped it is but we've got only limited room to do this if I do this calculation I get eighty thousand one hundred and thirty nine point four seven and finally we had a calculation from a hundred fifty dollars monthly for fourteen years twelve times fourteen that's one all divided by 0 0.06 over 12. I kind of like to recite the formula as I go to help myself remember exactly what I should be writing. And this gives us 39,345 point seven one okay excellent all that remains is for me to add these amounts together and if I do I'm getting six hundred six thousand eight hundred ninety nine point two one dollars And this is my total amount saved. As I said, this problem isn't necessarily a very hard one. Once you break it down to the point of doing four applications of the monthly retirement savings formula, it becomes pretty easy. But the very first thing to do in a problem like this, if the homework gives the one to you or if you decide to try doing this for yourself, for your own real world benefit, is to break everything down using a chart or a graph like I did and then create the formulas that you're going to use and then add everything together. All right, that covers everything that I would like to do in this video and it wraps up section 10.4. So thank you so much for your attention. And as always, I will see you in the next video.